Hey everyone, in this video we're going to continue learning about determinants. Uh, we learned about them last time and we're just going to keep going and learn some properties and theorems. So here's our first theorem. If we have a square matrix, then the following three things are true. If a multiple of one row of our matrix is added to another row, and by doing so we get a new matrix, we'll just call it B, then even though we did this row operation, the determinants are still equal. So the determinant of our original matrix, even though we added a multiple of a row to another row, that new matrix has the same determinant. Part two says, if two rows of A are interchanged, producing a new matrix, we'll call B, then the sign of the determinant actually swaps. So the determinant of the new matrix you got by interchanging the rows is the negative of the determinant of the original matrix. And then part three says, if one row of A is multiplied by some scalar K to produce our matrix B, then the determinant of B is just K, that same number, times the determinant of the original matrix A. Okay, so let's try this out with this example. We're gonna compute the determinant of this three by three matrix two ways, without performing any row operations, and then um, by writing the matrix in echelon form using our row operations and then the theorem we just looked at. So first, let's go ahead and do cofactor expansion and you can do this down any row or column if you remember, we talked about that before. Um, we're gonna go ahead and pick column three. I picked column three because it has a zero in it. Also a good choice would have been row three because it has a zero in it. Just makes us do a little bit less work. Okay, so by choosing column three, remember how this works, you um, cover up the row and column of the coefficient. So let me show you again, let me remind you, we've done this in the past. So for two, okay, my coefficient two, and remember the signs, it goes plus minus, the fast way is to do plus minus, plus minus across, um, let's do column one, so it'd be plus, minus, plus, and then you can work your way across here, minus, plus, this would be plus, you're just alternating signs. This was the fast way to do that um, cofactor coefficient, the sign of it. This is plus minus plus. Okay, so that's why I have a positive two out front right here. And then I wanna cover up the row and column of two. So if I cover up the row, if I cross that off and I cover up the column of two, then notice what's left. It's this two by two matrix right here. And that's what I have right here. Okay, so we've done this before. We're just reminding you how that goes. And so let's go ahead and do the same thing. I'll just show you one more time with um, the negative nine. Okay, so remember the sign here was negative. It was alternating, so that's why I have this minus right here. And then if I cover up the row of nine, negative nine, and the column of negative nine, notice what's left. It's one, negative four in row one and negative one and seven in our new row two. That's this resulting two by two. Okay, so just um, hopefully that seems familiar. We talked about that before. If not, go back to the previous video. We, we go through examples of doing this cofactor expansion. Okay, and then zero times this other two by two, but that's nice, it's just gonna be zero. And then once we're down to two by twos, which was really only one step since we started with a three by three, um, then remember how that determinant goes, it's really fast. It's diagonal down right minus diagonal down left. Or if you label these as A, B, C, D, it's A times D minus B times C. And so notice what we have. We have two times seven diagonal down right minus eight times negative one diagonal down left. And then you do that for each two by two, simplify, and we get that the determinant of this matrix is 15. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing. We should still get 15 but we're gonna reduce our matrix first to echelon form. Okay, so, and remember, if we are in echelon form, we have a triangular matrix, and finding the determinant is really quick. We talked about this in the past, it's just the product of the diagonal entries. So that's one of the good reasons to go ahead and do this rewriting in echelon form. But you do have to remember the theorem we just learned, because if you do some certain row operations, you're gonna to have to um, keep track of that for possibly changing the sign or the, the value of the determinant by a scalar. Okay, so a couple of steps. Determinant of A, let's go ahead and just add two times row one plus row two to get this new row two. 
and then let's go ahead and just add rows one and three to get this new row three. And then according to our theorem, this doesn't change our determinant at all because adding a multiple of one row to another was part one of our theorem. And so the determinant of this new matrix right here is the same as the determinant of the original one, according to our theorem. Okay, so here's where we just left off. Now let's go ahead and interchange rows two and three because row three now has zero, zero, and then our number, and this is triangular form or echelon form. We have zeros underneath the pivots. But according to our theorem, if we interchange two rows, the sign of the determinant changes. So that means that the determinant of our original matrix is the negative of the sign of the matrix we just, or the value of the matrix we just found. And so now remember this is in triangular form. So we can go ahead and just say the determinant shortcut is one times three times negative five. But we put this minus sign on because of our theorem said we interchanged two rows. And so we got 15, which is good because that's what we got doing it the other way. All right, so that's our theorem um, involving row operations on a matrix if you want to find the determinant. So another theorem says a square matrix A is invertible. Remember, that means it has an inverse if and only if its determinant is not zero. So we've seen this before, just reminding you about it. Um, and so the determinant is zero in if the columns or the rows of the matrix are linearly dependent. And so some fast ways to figure out if the, there's linear dependence in your matrix is if you see two rows or two columns that are the same, automatically linearly dependent. And then if you see a row or column that's all zeros, linear dependence. So some quick ways to tell if you're, you have linear dependence. And if that's the case, then the determinant of your matrix is zero Therefore, it wouldn't have an inverse if you were trying to figure that out, if you were trying to figure out if this was an invertible matrix or not. Okay, so let's try this example. This time we have a four by four matrix, and so we're gonna start doing some row operations on it. And just by doing the first one, let's just add two times row one plus row three. And so notice what that gives us. It gives us this new row three. And look, it's identical to another row. If we decided to do another row operation and add these, we would end up with a full row of zeros, or technically, if we said um, subtracting these. But the fact that two rows are the same, they're linearly dependent, and according to our theorem we just looked at, then the determinant is zero. So we didn't even have to do the whole computation on the long way or keep reducing this, just according to that last theorem, we're done. We can just say, oh, this determinant is zero. Okay, a couple more theorems here. If A is an n by n matrix, then the determinant of the transpose, so remember that A transpose, you swap the rows and columns, is equal to the determinant of the original. So that's kind of nice. If you transpose a matrix, the determinant is the same as the original. And then this one here says, if A and B are n by n matrices, and if you want to multiply them and then find the determinant, it's actually, oh, there's a typo here. So this should say B. And so it's equal to the individual determinants being multiplied. So what this is saying is you can take the determinant of one matrix, times it by the determinant of the other matrix, and it's the same result. Let's just cross that out a little better as if you were to multiply the matrices first and then find the determinant. So we're gonna go ahead and um, do an example of this one. So let's verify that multiplicative property for these two matrices that are two by twos. Okay, so first, let's go ahead and multiply them. So let me remind you how that works. So we have A times B, and so you take in the row one, column one, in the top left corner here, Notice this is still a two by two, it's just sort of stretched out because I put the computations in it. But row one, column one comes from taking row one from the first matrix times row two, or sorry, <laughs> column one. Row one of the first matrix times column one of the second matrix. And so you say six times four, so entry one times entry one plus 
one times one, entry two times entry two. So that's going to give you what's in the top left corner or in the one one position. And then let me just do the bottom right one so you can see. So in the, uh, we'll call it the two two position, row two, column two, it comes from taking row two of the first matrix times column two of the second matrix. So entries one, three times three, plus entries two, two times two, and that's going to be the bottom right corner or entry two, two. And so that gives us this resulting two by two. And so we want the determinant of that. And because it's just a two by two, we just say diagonal down right minus diagonal down left, and we get 45. All right, so we're going to verify this property we just learned and do the individual determinants. Okay, so this is what we just got by multiplying A times B. Now, if you do the determinant of just A, which was here, it's just going to be 6 times 2 minus 1 times 3, which is 9. And then the determinant of B, it's going to be 4 times 2 minus 3 times 1, which is 5. And according to our property, it said that if we multiply those two determinants, we should get the same answer. And we do. It's 45. Okay, so pretty quick section, just some properties and theorems that are useful when we're talking about determinants of matrices. That's it for this one.